probably the most brought up person for sure. Yeah. yeah. Speak like of the devil. Speak of the devil. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who's that? Oh, Who's that? Who's that? What? Are you talking to Rio? <laughs> yeah, I was talking to Rio. Uh, <laughs> How nice. Friend of my buddy Jeff. He's like, put me on the, put me on. Put I'll me get on him on. He can come on. We'll say that for, for down the road. You can ask him all your Eminem questions. There you go. Uh, Kyle Peterson, the man, the myth, the legend. You were on our my first episode before I had these two jokers with me. I was I was solo back when I didn't have all these uh, ball and chains with me. Just me by myself oh, riding down the road. Just me and you. First episode, man. Now you're back. I don't even know what episode we're on here, but uh, your collection has grown. You have a, before we get into the interview, uh, I think dropping tomorrow on Amazon, you have uh, March 1st. The book is coming out on Amazon. Hold that baby up. That thing is thick. It's thick 700, yeah. 700 pages. The uh, the yeah, history just, of uh, just Jack's classic superstars. Yeah, just shy of 700 pages there. Damn. That's awesome, man. Proud it's of you. It's a one. It could be dropped. You took all the photos deep. in that book. I took every single photo. Yeah, loose, mint on card, you name it. Wrote all everything. Wrote the back and the front. You a lot. Awesome. <laughs> Did a lot. Working in silence for a long time on that. You thing. were, Late yeah. We, the night. I told you about when when I told you about my book. Were you already working on your book? Yeah, I started about a year ago. I think oh. probably something like that. A couple a couple authors just chatted up. Just that, a couple bestsellers, I'm sure. It was like Stephen <laughs> King and Oprah talking to each other. Is what this is. Uh, <laughs> I got to yeah. teach like a college course just so I can make people buy more copies of that book. Be like, there you go. That's that's what the course is, guys. That's yeah. what we're talking about here. <laughs> they get the book. So you're going to be on on Amazon starting tomorrow, March 1st, for pre order, or is it a, is the order the order? The order is the order. Nice. So nice. Yeah. Cool. It'll and be, then, and you got it Barnes and Noble, which is awesome. Yeah, and you know Barnes and Noble. I mean, a lot of people are like, can I buy this at Walmart? Can I buy it at Target? No, you can't buy it at Walmart and Target. They only carry like Oprah's books and things like. They don't want wrestling yeah. figure books over there. But no. pretty much everybody has access to Amazon, Barnes and Noble. If you if you say you can't buy from those two places, I mean, what what are we doing? That's what yeah. I would say. Yeah. So. But uh, yeah, Barnes and Noble. About a week later, the delay with them is the hardcover. So I'm waiting to my proof should be here any day, and then it's all ready to go as long as everything's good. So it should be about a week later on Barnes and Noble. Signed copies at Barnes and Noble. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna go to the Barnes and Noble. I'm gonna sign them now. All they, the ones uh, in Iowa. All the ones in Iowa will have signed <laughs> copies. You You're should following that, Linda and Becky on the book tour. Nice. Yeah, you should 100 do that out. along your along your trails yeah. while you're working. Go pop into a Barnes and Noble, That's, sign one or two, cool. and leave it. Yeah. I could. I mean, I got like a nine state area. I'm traveling in all the time. But the only thing is, too, it's like I doubt it. I mean, you never know. But Barnes and Noble, so it's it'll be on their website. They can bring it into the store if they want to. And I'm, you know, okay. put that business hat on, being a realist. There, are they going to really want to put that? I mean, you never know. But yeah, I don't know. You know, you know how it goes. <laughs> we'll yeah, see. for sure. Um, you guys can follow Kyle on Instagram. It's the under uh, the dot Kyle dot Peterson on Instagram, and then obviously we we went over your YouTube, uh, Kyle Peterson nineteen eighty. You got two YouTube channels now. You had so much content. Um, I got to thank you. You keep me busy when I'm uh, just kind of down here in the fig cave. My son and me watch your videos. Um, always entertaining. You collect so much different stuff that I think it's almost literally. Even if you're not a wrestling figure collector, you would enjoy your stuff. And uh, you, yeah. you crank it out, man. Busiest man in the biz. Yeah, I don't mess up. I, mean, I don't mess around at all. I mean, I, I'm up 24-7 pretty much hustling, doing something. Either it's the day job, the night job, the wife, the kids. There's, I'm oh. a master multitasker, let me tell you. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to all that for sure. But it is the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson, not dot. Don't use the dot. That's going to be a different person. But that, um, I don't know. how did you... How'd you find time to write this book and, and take the pictures and, and, and what, what prompted it? Like, obviously I know you've had, you know, I was never a collector of the classic superstars, but I watch your videos and I could tell, you know, you talk about everything, but I can tell when you talk about that, it's, it's a little glimmer in your eye, Kyle, that that was, yeah. that was a line that Tears always out. really kind of tugged on your heartstrings. What was it about this uh, line that made you want to write a book about it? You know, it all goes back. Uh, I've, I've been a lifelong collector ever since I was a little kid. My first memory is, is like little, little kid collecting He-Man, Star Wars, all that stuff. And I never really stopped. But then you get to that point where you're, you know, going to college and, you know, you got a one bedroom apartment or whatever it is and you just don't have the room. And uh, I still enjoyed figures. I just, you know, I said, hey, I better sell this. It's a whole nother story there. But uh, I was always watching and seeing what was going on. And 
you know, it was a lull in my figure collecting, I guess, around that time. However, I would go to Toys R Us every Friday night, as a college kid would do, of course, on a Friday course, night. Yeah. Why wouldn't you take my girlfriend? Oh, we got to swing in here and see what's going on. But <laughs> I'll never forget, you know, I was the Internet was obviously a thing when I was in college, but I didn't pay close attention to the toy news like I do right now. So I went to Toys R Us just on a Friday night like I usually do. And there it was, Classic Superstar Series 1. And I about fell to I tell the story in the book, but I about fell to my knees right there in the aisle because there had never been anything like this ever before in the action figure lines. Um, it was always, you know, LJNs, Hasbro's, Bone Crunchers, things like that. We had Ruthless Gresham, but it was all modern people. We never had a look back to, oh my gosh, Ultimate Warrior in 2004 was a wild thing to get WrestleMania 6 Ultimate Warrior. So that just was like, holy cow. And then as the lines went, you know, series one through 28 and you get into the two packs, three packs, what the classic superstars line brought, I mean, a lot of people, we hear it, and everybody on here probably says that's so Jax from time to time. It, that's easy to say with 2024 eyes, but you go back, I mean, they were cutting edge for the time. It was mm -hmm. an absolute game changer, and still some of the head sculpts hold up to this day and age. But to just um, see that line for the first time and then to be able to collect it as it happened, that's one question I get a lot is, how did you afford all these? Well, I bought it from series one through and when they're eight 99, nine 99, 10 99, it's not that big a deal as you're going through getting it. It's trying to go get them 10 years later. is the hard yeah, part. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think it's, it's, it's a good point because we're spoiled now with the legends line and all this stuff and, and all these other little independent companies. But back then it was, it was a game changer to have guys from the past. Um, so I think, you know, people, as collectors now don't really see the importance of it, but I think it's a, uh, it was definitely, I mean, Jerry Padauer was ahead of his time for sure. So, I mean, and you think of what that line brought, not to just wrestling figures, but all action figures in general, because uniform packaging was never really a thing throughout that brought that, uh, the collectability with the chase rare editions, the store exclusives. I mean, I guess on, <sighs> on one side of the coin, you could say he's at fault for a lot of that because the limited edition stuff drives people crazy, but I mean, the one of three Ultimate Warriors, one of five Ultimate Warriors, one of 20 Ric Flairs. I mean, wild stuff like that, which just didn't happen in the toy industry. And now it's still not super normal, but it's more people realize it nowadays. And it, back yeah. then, it was new ground. Yeah. For sure. I remember walking into, like, the same 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 story, Toys R Us, KB, wherever, and just being like, whoa, this is... I can't believe it's 2000. What when did they drop? 2003, 2002. Four. Yeah, four? I mean, it was yeah, yeah. early 04. Yeah, and just being like, oh, like exactly what you said. Oh my God, there's an Andre the Giant action figure that it, I can kind of be cool and collect. Um, what I, out of this whole series, the whole classic superstars line, what do you think is the best one that has ever been released? What do you think oh, is the worst geez. one that has ever been released? Man, best and worst. Out of the whole mm -hmm. line. I mean, there's a lot of good ones. There's a lot of stuff I like. I, I really love the Terry Funk that was released uh, early on. I mean, that still holds up to this day. It's a beautiful. Obviously, I'm biased with Terry Funk, Ultimate Warrior being my favorites. I mean, that was the first thing that jumped. Actually, it's going to be the Terry Funk Bloody Edition, one of uh, mm -hmm. 100. Nobody did bloody figures back then. I mean, it was yeah. just a totally different yep. world. There was those uh, figure toy company ones that I'm not a fan of those. And I think <laughs> those might even have been uh, somewhat around the right time, but... That Terry Funk was an all-timer. There's no doubt about it. And then, uh, boy, the worst. There is some bad ones. I mean, as much as I love Je I love them because they're so bad sometimes. But uh, some of those, <laughs> like Yokozuna is a bad one. I mean, he's a big dude, obviously. But they gave him this little peanut head, and I think that ruins that figure. But, I mean, I'd have to sit and think about it. I'm sure I can think of some worst ones. I mean, there's some real rough ones for sure. But uh, some is, one, is, there one, is there one you were super excited for and then just the execution besides Yoko? Like, that you're like, oh, he's coming out. And then you're like, what the, what is this? Yeah. Some of the um, end of the line stuff. And, you know, whenever that day happens with Mattel, we're going to see the same thing. And, you know, it's yeah. one thing too. Mattel is not, there's a lot of crap from Mattel. And there's a lot of good stuff from Mattel. No different from Jack's back in the day. But mm -hmm. um, some of the later stuff at the very end, you know, the Bret Hart from the last series in his jorts. It was basically, <laughs> let's, let's just use John Cena's jorts mold. Don't put it on Bret Hart. <laughs> I mean, Brett did wear jorts, but I don't know if you wore them down to like his ankles that that low. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty Lots. wild. Yeah. Good call. <laughs> um, what uh the the managers being like bigger than some of the wrestlers is what got me. Is like, I understand yeah. not you know 
not everything is always in scale and things like that. But yeah, like is it Paul Bear? Um, yeah. is yeah, it Paul Bear that's like bigger than the Undertaker in one of he's them? Pretty bad. Yeah, and you know, once again, I, I I look past that a little bit just because at the time Hasbro's L Jans, everything for the most part was the same size. And right. it, it's like a lot of us are scale snobs and size snobs in this yeah. day and age, and it's like but that was oh, really goodness. the first time anybody ever started talking about it. And it's funny is like uh, that Paul Bearer, there wasn't a lot of people talking about it at the time because it was common to have that kind of stuff. But years mm-hmm. later, I mean, and that reminds me, I mean, the worst figure is probably that Kane from that three pack Undertaker, Kane, Paul Bearer, classic oh. three pack. That Kane is an all time brutal figure. And that was, <laughs> that was one that immediately I saw. I said, this is very disappointing. Phil was so disappointed. And he said, I'm out of here. Wow. He left. He, well, he, he loves left. that Kane. Wow, he he's gonna, he's gonna, I'm he's, sorry to offend him. Yeah, he's gonna go put wow. his, that T-shirt he made of the kid. Um, I just, I just saw Nick's uh, line there. Sat near Kyle at Mania. That's very true. He did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything to rub it into Phil. <laughs> the um, the 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 scale. It was even. I think Jeremy got an interviewed by the Major Boys like a while ago. Which I hope people can go back and find that or listen to that. It's such a great interview. But he said that that's like one of the first regrets. Like he's like, you know, we're looking at hindsight, but scale. He's like, we didn't even think about scale when we did it. So yeah. we yeah, have to yeah. kind of ignore it. But I know what you're saying like it's there's a there's a in the book. I got a nice uh, you know I spent some time with Jeremy a couple occasions. Had a couple of calls with Jeremy. There's a nice interview in the book uh, with Jeremy uh, where we talk right. about some of that kind of stuff. Oh, that's yeah, back the, on it with I, I probably have like 10 of the classic superstars, but the first one I bought, and I think it was a gift for my dad because he looks like them, is the Afa Sika and, and Captain Lou, the three pack. Yep. yep. Which was Classic. buried in his closet for, you know, 15 years. I actually re bought it and then I found it in his closet. I'm like, I told you I had this. Like, where is it? So, <laughs> oh, gosh. I, I love that. I love that three pack. It's like, I think it's perfect for the whole idea of that line. Yeah, Captain so, Lou is ri- ripped out of his mind too. He's got abs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so authentic. I yeah, didn't even perfect. realize the two packs were a thing. And then me and my, one of my friends, we went. So we collected. We also collected the McFarland Sports Picks figures. And he was a landscaper. He'd get laid off in the winter. I was DJing at bars and stuff. So like I had nights off and th- or days off there and, and things like that. So I, we actually took. We're in the Northeast. Uh, we took a ride to Sherbrooke quebec canada and wow. just for the hell of it we were like we both had the day off it's a three-hour ride there three-hour ride back let's just let's just do it well boys day right and uh i walked in and there was a demolition two-pack in toys r us up there and i was like yeah i'm uh i'm grabbing this uh there was a bunch of others that i had never seen before and i just remember like like the hard-eyed emoji before it's time like at, <laughs> at the wall of toys r us in canada and, and then they were everywhere once i got back in the states a couple weeks later but of course yeah. i want to believe they had some sort of little french like accent over axe smash and demolition like that's nah. what there was no way to identify that it was canadian you know quebec beautiful this time of year of course we, we should <laughs> but you know the wild thing about and this is one thing i um i talk about in the videos i do a classic superstars video every single tuesday I actually got them in the can all the way through the end of 2025. That's how far ahead I am. Wow. Every Ooh. single week. Yeah, I'm way ahead. Like a year ago, I did them. And uh, the one thing about that's crazy about those two packs and the Walmart three packs is, and it's different than this day and age. This was some of the fun and excitement of hunting the classics at the time. We had no idea they were coming out because – ringside solicits you know the latest classic superstars line the latest elite one because they're trying to sell them toys r us had the exclusive two packs walmart had the exclusive three packs and what they ended up doing was hey we don't have to promote these jack said i don't have to promote them they're already sold to toys r us it's up to toys r us to promote them they never did so people on the west coast usually would walk in and say oh my gosh here's demolition and you go to the wrestling figure boards and people post it and they say i just saw demolition and then of course everybody say no you didn't show a picture show a picture and then eventually the picture would come. And I knew like clockwork, once the West Coast hit, it was two Fridays later, my Toys R Us would hit. And like wow. clockwork, I'd get them every single other two weeks later on Friday, I'd pick them up. Just like, just uh, like all the Walmarts yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect distribution. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. But it was a wild time. Like you had no idea what was coming out for Walmart and Target until somebody found it out there. It was just that's one thing I miss about collecting, especially be it any line is, you know, what's coming out six months to a year ahead. There's very rare. We get just a surprise. I think Todd McFarlane, he's on the couch right now sleeping, but 
he uh <laughs> God, yeah come on todd get in here no. uh he does that occasionally he'll drop something real quick which is really nice and feels old school to me i miss that for sure mm-hmm. yeah, it is, yeah i do miss that a little bit Sure. I feel like we got so, a little bit of that at the end. Sorry, Nick. At the no. end of the Toys R Us run, where like we'd walk in, somebody would walk in somewhere, and there'd be like a net one of those WWE network exclusives that nobody knew was coming. And it was like everybody and their mother was running to Toys R Us that Saturday or whatever yeah. day it dropped, trying to find it. But I feel like we haven't had that in quite did a we, bit. Did we know about that ladder match two pack before that dropped on? That was like San Diego Comic Con last year. That kind of dropped randomly. I mean, that. That's, I mean, Some of the Amazon ones, future. people just find the links. It's crazy. Like, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Gooker and Undertaker. I remember talking to Steve at San Diego Comic. It was it San Diego Comic Con or WrestleMania? It was one of WrestleMania. Those two. He was oh, like, oh, they kind of spoiled bad. it. Like, yeah, they beat us by like six hours or something like that. And then that right. same thing happened to Hasbro today in the GI Joe stream. Uh, the Tiger Force Two Pack got dropped on Target like four hours before the stream. Oh, oh. Jesus! It happens. It happens. So safe to say, this is your favorite. The classic superstars is your favorite line. You know, it's tough because obviously I grew up with the LJNs and Hasbro's. I mean, those were my hardcore playing days. I mean, so much fun, and I still remember. Like, I'd, I'd literally sit and play with my wrestling figures and GI Joes for like eight to ten hours a day. Like, my dad will tell the story. Like, I just put Kyle in the base. We'd shut the door. We'd leave for a long time, and he wouldn't even know we're gone. <laughs> All the Joes. I'd be running pay per views with the GI Joes. That was my fig fit. Oh yeah, hours. Yeah. Yeah, but you know the classics is probably extra special because I don't know. I, I really, it's like sentimental in some ways. But it's if it didn't happen, would I be collecting now? Would I be doing what I'm doing right now? I don't know if I would because it really brought me back. And then that snowball to oh my gosh, here's a GI Joe 25th anniversary line that's coming out. A figure subscription club for GI Joe. Jumping into that, and then, oh, there's this Transformer here, and oh my gosh, these new Marvel Legends, and it just snowballed. And without classic superstars. You know, you're at the age where you're in college. You know, it's uh, that's a tough time to say you, you either stay or you go. Yeah, same age, <laughs> yeah. same age. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Most people are gone by then. So I think if the classics wouldn't have hit, I think I would have been just moved on from figures altogether, probably. I would say the same thing Imagine for me. Like if I didn't, if I didn't see the classics in '04 and the McFarland sports picks and stuff like that, I don't think I would be doing this now. I would be, I don't know what I'd be doing, but yeah, yeah. Um. Dude, you got you got an important job. You got a lovely wife, Angie, who's in your videos. You got two great kids, you got three dogs, I think. I mean, you're you're dropping videos like what on like how do you find time to like how do you balance your time? Because yeah. I don't know how you do it. It's a lot. That's why, you know, I always get I, I always like I hear people say, Oh my gosh, I can't put up one video a week or something like that. It's like <laughs> there's time. I mean, there's always time, and I've always thought this ever since I was a little kid, you know, I've been I have never not been, been unemployed since I was 12 years old. It's it's the saddest thing ever. I was like, and I yell at my dad. I yelled at him the other day because my work day job is, I, I'm surprised I haven't had multiple heart attacks by now. There's a, there's a lot on my, on my plate every single day. And it's it's the height of its stress right now. That's a story for off air. But um, I always say there's always time. If you want to do something bad enough, you'll find time for it. Yeah. I mean, you will. And it's just, you know, I, I don't sleep as much. I think uh, I'm turning into my dad in my old age because he never slept either. So I guess that's what I'm doing. But, you know, you work all day and stuff and you eat dinner, hang out with the kids and stuff. And then the kids, you know, they want to be on their iPad or whatever as they get close to bed. And that's when you start uh, editing videos, doing stuff. You need to do things like that. But maybe uh, the lion's share of my stuff's done on the weekends, you know, on Saturday and Sunday. And Sunday is kind of my day. I get up extremely early on Sunday and I crank out like 95% of my content on Sundays. I just start wow. early in the morning, go like 12 hours straight of shooting, basically, and just wow. uh, roll with it. And then I. Are there I, outtakes? I, is that even a thing? Or are you just what? so you got it outtakes goes, or are you just so some outtakes of it? Yeah, sometimes every once yeah. in a while. I really don't mess up very often because I speak to large groups for a living. So like yeah, okay. I can fill my words pretty good, or at least what I want to. And so it's not like a lot of you know, I, I feel for people that would stumble and stammer or start going the wrong way because that's a that'd be a lot of work in the editing booth. But really, I can about edit a video in about as much time as it takes to watch it. I mean, I watch through it once and edit it and go through, but yeah, it's uh yeah, it's wild. I'm just lucky. I mean, it takes a long time to, you know, get the glamour shots and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that's the lion's share of the editing process. But yeah, it's just uh, 
it's just a cycle I've been into. And usually I'm, you know, in a hotel a couple nights a week, most of the time traveling. And that's a great time where I can never sleep in a hotel. So I'll just hammer out editing <laughs> the videos, things like that. And Good call. Um, I just roll, roll with it. So it's just kind of the, you know, routine I've been in for, and it'll be four years, I think at the end of March. And, you know, I, I do four videos every single day for a year now. It's been three videos every single day for two years now. And I mean, I, I'm currently working on probably the biggest project of my life. So you guys get a little scoop. I'm not going to say what it is, but uh, it's a game changer. So we'll see. More to come. Oh, my gosh. Ooh. Come on, man. Give, give us a little more tease than that. Jeez. We'll see. We'll see what happens. It, it's okay. figure related, but it's outside of the figure world as well. So, OK, uh, you're doing retros. Great. I'm going to do uh, yeah, local independent wrestlers retro line. It's going to be amazing. Oh, yes. <laughs> makes 50, Fifty-five dollars, and, and it's fifty-four if you use our discount code. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there you go. There All right, you go. Well, let's let's. I don't want to keep you too much longer. Let's fly through the rest of these questions here, and we'll get you out of here because uh, I, I know you're uh, I okay. Yeah. All right, that's good. That's good. As long as you all do. right, WWE or Masters? WWE or Masters? Yep. Oh, WWE all day. Okay. Easy. All right. Wow. wow. It's yeah. tough because you have a whole room now for the Masters. I do. But that... I mean, I got what? One, two, three, four, five wrestling rooms. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah. That's I, I watched that last video of the crowdfunding, um, the uh, Masters that you did, the, the giant the set. And I was just like, yeah, I was just like, a little bit of FOMO kicking in. I got out of that line and I'm like, <laughs> I'm glad I did. And then I watched that and I'm yeah. like, oh, no. I'm oh, a, no. I still got to do it. I mean, that's one thing that I I need to find time for and I'm trying to struggle is uh, my collection is a little bit of a more messy than I would like it to be. I mean, we've all been there, but yeah. uh, doing my year end best of videos, you know, grabbing a figure here, there. I did so many of those videos. Now I got like boxes of stuff I need to put back. And it's yeah, like, oh, that's yeah. a full day thing. And then I got to build. You, you guys saw that video on attorney. I built that whole platform and all that. I'm going to set up that whole universe on that table. Well, I got to do all that still as well. So that's going to be a yeah. full day project. So yeah. uh, first world problems. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> when you um, are scrolling the internet and something pops up on Entertainment Earth or uh, Big Bad Toy Store, Ringside, what makes you say, oh, I need that for the collection? Like, what What are your rules? What I, I feel like just when I get that YouTube notification, I feel like you buy everything or you get everything. What is, and I don't mean that in a negative way yeah, at yeah. all. Uh, yeah. But like, I got a notification about a Power Ranger thing today that you did, and I was like, "You didn't even realize he did Power Rangers." Um, yeah. So, is there like what is what does it take for it to make it to Kyle Peterson's collection? Yeah, I've got rules. I've got very specific rules on stuff too. And my biggest rule, and I, I've said it before, is I will never have a storage unit. I will never have stuff in storage if I can't see that I have the item. I don't need it in my collection. If it doesn't mean enough for me to display, I don't need it because you could have a bunch of stuff in a tote, but then it's just a tote. It's like, how do I know? Maybe my wife threw everything away in there and it's full of Halloween decorations now. I mean, I guess you can <laughs> yourself and just say, oh, I got that whole collection. Uh, so that's one rule I do have. And obviously, you know, as uh, there's only so much space in everybody's collection. So eventually things have to go. And I do cycle out stuff from time to time. There's a few things like I just dropped the ultimates, uh, my uh, mint on card set. I said, you know what? I'm not doing it. It doesn't feel special anymore. They're putting too many out. I love the idea of it when there was like six to nine, maybe 10 a year. That felt special. But when you're putting three in a series and nothing against Bobby Lashley, I like Bobby Lashley, but that was kind of the hit. Him and Bianca kind of broke the camel's back a little bit because it just felt like, yeah. uh, not that they're not worthy, but just it didn't feel special. It just felt like another set of figures. So uh, there's definitely stuff. So I dropped out of a double up club on that kind of stuff. Um, Star Wars, you know, I bailed on a lot of Star Wars stuff, but basically it's got to uh, touch my inner child or something. It has to be something I'm interested in. I'm not going to buy something just to buy it. I mean, it's got to be something I do like or whatever. Now, uh, mm -hmm. there is occasionally a thing. Where is it? Right here. I got this guy for $3, the Penguin from the DC McFarlane. Huh. So yep. Occasionally, something like this will come in the collection, but it's Entertainment Earth with the discount code. You get free shipping with $79. Well, you always get something that's like $76, and then it's $20 shipping. I'm like, oh, I need yeah, free. No. So they have yeah. this big outlet section, and he was $2.98. Put me oh, over man. the edge to get free shipping. So every once in a while, I'll get something like that. But 
uh, it's got to be something that I can relate to. And really, it's basically Masters of the Universe, G.I. Joe, He-Man, obviously the wrestling, um, Thundercats, and I, I dabble in the Mythic Legions a little bit. I just get the ones I think look really cool. Um, but besides that, that's really all I collect. I, I can't remember if I said Marvel Legends in there, but yeah, it's just that kind of stuff. Is And then occasionally you'll get a crazy figure like that, a Nosferatu NECA or something like that. I'll pick up something <laughs> like that just because... <laughs> You know, I don't know if you guys know this. I'm one class away from a minor in film. One of these days, gonna gonna finish oh, that. Man. <laughs> Come on, oh. yeah. with all yeah, the I've extra never time seen you have, movies. it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I still can't believe you've never seen Back to the Future, but I've never seen Goonies, so I get it. Uh, I get it. Kyle, Kyle yeah. Peterson has never seen a single Tom Cruise movie. We had talked. We can we can we can finally divulge this. We we were in early talks to do a Tom Cruise podcast of just all his movies because <laughs> Kyle Peterson has never seen a single. Tom Cruise movie. One. And I don't count Tropic Thunder. I saw Tropic Thunder in the theater, but it was because they didn't say he was going to be in it. You know, it was like, if uh, I would have known, I wouldn't have went because I found oh. out in like 2004 that I'd never seen a Tom Cruise movie. And from that moment on, I said, well, now I'm going to keep that streak alive. I'll oh, never see man. a Tom Cruise movie. Okay. That's how I am about Goonies is everybody's like, oh, you've never seen Goonies? You have to see it. And I'm like, uh, I don't think it'll hold up if you watch I'm it. I'm 41 years no, old. I'm gonna, no. I don't think it's. It's I'm gonna go to my grave not seeing Goonies. And a couple uh, last summer, they like put it back into the theaters, like they do, like the you know 30th anniversary or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And my buddies were like, "Hey, Cinemark is doing a mystery movie. Do you want to come?" And for some reason, I ended up finding out that it was Goonies way before the the night. And I was like, "Fuck you guys! <laughs> I'm white hot with you right now. You know, like this is my <laughs> thing. I don't want to see Goonies." Yeah. I'm like, if I went there. Cartman level tantrum at a time. That's what you would have seen. Screw you guys. I'm going home. I'm grabbing a bucket of popcorn on the way out, but I'm going home. (laughs) I haven't (laughs) seen it either. So I'm with you. I've never seen it. I've never seen Karate Kid. I've never seen it. Now I'm upset. Now I'm upset. (laughs) Yeah. Kyle Kyle was the reason I made made this podcast, this movie podcast, because I can't. I mean, there's only so much time in the day. How how is he going to. He watches every episode of wrestling. So, I mean, that's. (laughs) Right, I mean, you watch yeah. you've watched every episode of Raw and SmackDown. I've never missed an episode of Monday Night Raw. I've never missed one episode my wow. whole life. That'll Ooh. cause a couple heart attacks compared to the job. I mean, that's <laughs> yes, basically. it's been rough. I mean, I'm multitasking during it, but uh, yeah, I'm editing yeah. videos yeah. or doing something. But it, yeah. I'm very, I got to stick with it. I can't give up on something. That's it's a terrible habit. <laughs> wow. wow, that's impressive. That's crazy. But never yeah, seen. I mean, I've I know I've seen most of them, but that's. Even in college, we had no cable. We did not have cable at UConn. You had to pay for it. Oh, man. I, uh, I even go back to when it was prime time as a little kid. I never missed. Pr- Basically, whenever I started, when I started watching wrestling after WrestleMania three, I never stopped. Every bit of wrestling I could get my hands on. If the WWE Network was around when I was a little kid, I mean, I, I don't know where I'd be. I would have just. That's all I would have done. I would have never left the house. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm changing yeah. my question then. What? Who were we missing? If, if for all the years that you watched, who like are you like pissed they've never made? For an action figure? Yeah, for yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. The Rougeau brothers is right at the top, but we know uh, Mitch is coming out with some Rougeau brothers, but <sighs> it's ridiculous we didn't get him in the LJNs. It's ridiculous we didn't get him at the beginning of the Hasbros. Ridiculous we didn't get him in Jazz Classic Superstars. And it's ridiculous we never got him in Mattel. And I'm not even the biggest Rougeau guy. I think they had an amazing theme song. But it's just wild. That's a huge hole in the collection for me. Uh, I'd love to see them. Among others, Dory Funk Jr. is another one I'd love to see just because I love Terry Funk so much. But Is he getting a power town, Dory Funk? Uh, not he, announced. He will, anything, sure. but I think yeah. he's one of those thousand people they have on their list, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what's, your, what's your white whale figure that has been made that you don't have? Um, or play set or... or whatever i i have it but my holy grail i have it loose but it's the ljn grand toys ultimate warrior i want one min on card that's that's kind of like that was such a big deal for me when i was a little kid like nobody i remember at school like nobody believed because i don't know how well you guys know about the black card series from ljn's how they were only available in canada and then in the back of like the pwi magazines and kids did not believe they were a real thing i had to bring it to school and everything but it to be a little Ultimate Warrior fan, to get the first ever Ultimate Warrior action figure was just an amazing day in my fig fed when I was playing as a kid. 
I didn't understand how they weren't available in the store, but only in the back of this magazine. I was like, why would they make another Hogan? It doesn't even make sense. Like these are got to be fake. Yeah. But I need yeah. Barbarian. I need Haku. I need, I need this warrior. And it was, and I am a guy, especially as a kid, I would never turn down any wrestling figure ever. The only wrestling figure I ever turned down in my entire life was the LJN Ravishing Recruit. Even as a little kid at like eight years old, I said, there is nothing I can do with this figure. I don't, I don't even need it. There's nothing I can do. <laughs> my mother worked that gimmick that that was her favorite wrestler for like to this day that it like she full heel in my house, her rooting for Rick, Fla Rick Rude. <laughs> Oh man! I gave her I gave her the SummerSlam one a couple years ago like for her for her birthday. <laughs> well, the, the, the last LJ and Warrior on eBay of going for three fifty, five fifty, four hundred. So I, I don't even know how much a uh, I don't see any yeah. mint on card ones. It's probably hard to, hard to come it's, by. But if I I, think I see one, there was one I saw one. It was either San Diego Comic Con or Kane County. And the guy wanted thirty five hundred, I think, for it. <sighs> I saw one at a con in the package, but the package looked very suspicious. Like it may have been repacked. And the guy yeah. was like giving me an attitude about it. And I was just like, I would, I'm not going to buy it. I'm not in the, it, like, I, I don't have any uh, emotional attachment to that figure as much as I love Ultimate Warrior. But mm -hmm. uh, I just, yeah, it just looked sketchy as hell. And the guy seemed sketchy as hell, too. So I, there's a, my there, Nick, there's a Rick Rude. Oh, go ahead. My good buddy, good friend of the channel, Jeff George, he's a, a musician. He bought an entire LJ and Min on card collection over COVID. Mm -hmm. Totally. And I've made him give me the warrior in his will. So <laughs> okay. we'll see. There you go. And so that's that's my probably best chance of getting it as of right now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we can make get him, him, get him, get him, get him to start smoking or feed him <laughs> some red meat or something. Speed the process along. Whatever you want to do. I don't remember if I asked you this, Kyle, last time we had you on, but um question we asked all our guests. If you were on death row, you had one final meal, you could eat or drink whatever you wanted, what would it be? It would be that KFC Cheesa or Chizza or whatever oh, that is. Oh, that come on. Man. A whole set, that's what it would be. It's just an amazing, amazing idea. Actually, I had that tonight because uh, some know I'm a little bit of a pizza connoisseur. I eat a lot of pizza. And uh, I, you know, do reviews and things. I've been on the news and podcasts about my pizza reviews. So uh, I had to try it out for science, of course. And it was god awful. I gave it a one out of ten. It was horrible. It's it, it, it was like bad. it was like somebody would do a college. You come home at like three a.m. from out at the bars in college, and it's like, oh, I got this piece of chicken breast. Oh, I got some ragu in the refrigerator. I'm gonna put it on there. <laughs> we'll sprinkle some cheese on the top, and oh, I got a pepperoni. We throw it in, put it in the microwave. That's exactly what it tasted like. It was horrible. Oh, but God. It would definitely be pizza for me. That's where I would go. It would probably be Pequod's Pizza out of Chicago. Not a big deep dish guy, but that kind of toes the line between Detroit style and uh, Chicago style. So I'm a big fan of that one. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to add one final question here because I want you to put put that business hat on. We have, we have a, a, a Jazzwares AEW announcement tomorrow. Just give me your your state of jazz wares where where we are right now. I mean, maybe four years after the line started, that's just a guesstimation. Where some stores are stopping selling them, we haven't had too many pre orders. The just the innovation and the lack of like you know the blood and guts thing you can touch on, but that's we're two years into that now. We got to keep evolving here a loaded that's a loaded is question, it, but I know is exactly. it is it just because we're down on the totem pole on the jazz wares? Squishmallow uh, ladder here, or what? Give, you, you, you got the stage. Tell me what Jazzwares is doing wrong and what they, what they can fix. I guarantee you, without Jeremy Padauer, there's no AEW figures. It's over, and they would cut to that. He's got pull, obviously, in the company. He can keep that. It's a passion product for him. So, really, we got to be a little bit thankful for that because if he wasn't at the helm, there would be none of this. No blood and guts, yeah. no anything. Because yeah. we got the business hat. You set me up real good there. You take that step back, there's kids from four to 104 to steal the old starting lineup uh, kind of thing, you know, ages four to 104. That's kind of what WWE wrestling figures touch. There's little four-year-old kids that want those. There's 90-year-old grandparents that are buying them for their grandkids. You can't uh -huh. say that about jazz wares. It's like a 22 to 44 or whatever the window is. It's a lot smaller. It's a lot more niche. 
it's just not there. And unfortunately, I, I don't think in our lifetimes and probably ever is it going to catch up with the WWE machine. It's just not going to happen. It's just not going to be on that stage. So yeah. I think that's what it is. And I think Jeremy, I mean, obviously, they're not going to tell their business practices. They don't want that out there. They don't want competition. They don't want others to know. But you said it right. I mean, Pokemon, Squishmallow sell millions upon millions upon millions of dollars more than any AEW stuff is going to be. I wouldn't be shocked just knowing because uh, in my day job, I've negotiated with uh, Bentonville. I've negotiated with Target up in Minnesota. Uh, I've been in those offices. I know how they think. And I guarantee the Jazz Wars team is probably playing a little of that. Hey, well, I'll give you this squish, I'll give you this, but we also need space for this. And it's a lot of give okay. and take on things like that. And mm. I mean, I just look at it like we're very lucky we got somebody like Jeremy because without him, we wouldn't have this at all. I don't think. I just don't yeah, think they would just look at the bottom all. line and they would they would probably cut it. Yeah. And then you would be looking at maybe it would be like an Epic Toys or something like that is making Jazz. Whereas where are you going to be then? You're like $60 a figure. Not that they have terrible quality or anything, but that's that's an expensive uh, purchase on those kind of things. So yeah, I don't know. And then tomorrow you said the announcement. I fully expect it's got to be the vault announcement. They said March 1st forever. Tomorrow's March 1st. So I would assume, hey, the vault's officially open. And it feels like that they have everything ready to go. They're going to do a Mattel Creations thing. Here's a, here's what we got. It's ready to ship. Order it right now. That's my guess. I, I don't know. But. Yeah, I think that'll be good for them for stuff because you can put a lot of the odds and ends stuff that doesn't sell on the pegs there. Yeah. Um. But but Nick's brought up a good point that that should be just the home for a constant. Something's always up there. You know what I mean? Something's always for sale, and and get people go into that traffic to it because the line is on life support for me. I like I said in your videos, a lot of targets have stopped it. The, yeah. the Supremes, we haven't got a Supreme pre-order from Ringside since summertime with the Lucha Brothers. I mean, and those figures are amazing. I mean, you've you've done some really good reviews on those. That's what I think they should lean into, but those are also more expensive. There's even smaller niche of a niche for those. Yeah. So it's it's tough being the being the second fiddle behind WWE when you're looking at being a toy retailer, I'm sure. I can see the vault. And I mean, I think a lot of companies, pretty much every company, would love to cut out Walmart, would love to cut out Target, Amazon, because they're taking a piece of the pie. If you can go direct to consumer with your goods, you get more of the profits. You can give a little bit better deal. And for a company like jazz wears the aw i think they got a better opportunity because their fan base is more apt to go on the internet and kind of search that stuff out and find that yeah. where little jimmy he's seven years old he probably can't tell grandma hey go to the vault or whatever <laughs> so they got a good chance at that I don't, they're not going to topple wwe or anything but i do think that is the way i and really if you think about it what percentage like if people get mad you see you guys are all in the facebook groups people get mad all the time about well, how come all ringside has all these chase and rare editions? Well, I bet ringside orders like 85% of all AEW figures. So they oh, yeah. share it. Yeah, yeah, for 100 percent So maybe yeah. it'll spread that out a little bit. Because I think early on when they mentioned the vault, I want to say they announced the vault at San Diego Comic Con last year. And I think they said like chase rare editions would be for sale up there on the vault. So yeah. That's be interesting. Good... I mean, yeah, like the bunny was supposed to be, yeah. Yeah, and that's the perfect example. You know, the bunny is a funny one. I think that was one of 5,000 on that one, I think. And people were all up in arms. How dare they put that? Well, how hard do you think the bunny would be to find without that sticker? And if it was, you know, still, what, what if it's always one of 5,000? What if the bunny was always going to be one of 5,000 no matter what? But you put that sticker on there, guess what? It's trained people that don't even buy him to actually pick it up. Yep. I wouldn't be shocked if the bunny had 5,000 regardless or some of these chases. And some of these regular figures have 5,000 just the same. So, mm. Yeah, I, I think I tweeted about it or put it on Facebook that I, I think they just need a, a Steve Ozer that's going to explain things to us. You, you don't know this collector collecting forever website now has AW figures. There's just not there's just not a lot of communication. Stuff just pops up and it, a lot of the a lot of the new stuff will just leak and then they won't even talk about it. I think one time Jeremy Padauer said, you, who's ready for some AW reveals? tomorrow and then nothing nothing happened i think it was like a yeah. like a post on a on a message board so it's i, I know it's not a huge priority but you gotta pay somebody yeah. seventy five thousand to just be your spokesperson and, and, and kind of yeah. rally the troops it, to me it just goes back to they just not have the funds or nobody wants to step up and do yeah. it because we'd love yeah. to have jeremy do it more often but man jeremy is a totally different level than he was over there at Jack's. I mean, he's got way more on his plate. So yeah, I think yeah. he would love to do it, but he can't. And you see like 
lately I was like, gosh, I haven't heard a lot from Jeremy on social media. I mean, he hasn't really posted for a long time. He was at a Germany toy fair. I mean, he's all over. And at the end of the day, Jeremy yeah. is a smart business guy and he knows Pokemon Squishmallow is going to keep me employed and keep me with the lifestyle I have. I got to be careful devoting too much to this jazz wares. I love it or, jazz, or yeah. AEW. I love it. But yeah. at the end of the day, you know, it, it's a, it's a tough circle, but I, I wish they could find somebody. I mean, Heck, I'll do it. Hire me part time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ethan, what's Ethan Page doing? Does Ethan Page ever wrestle anymore? Get him on there. <laughs> I mean, a, yeah, you use Smart Mark. Can, yeah. Or Danhausen. Just have him do it. I mean, Danhausen's yeah. up for anything. Just have him be this yeah. Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's well, what we do need. And I don't know. Maybe in the future that'll have. Maybe that'll be the announcement tomorrow. We got our big uh, Stings retiring, but he's going to be our spokesman for figures going forward. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. They, well, they had Keith Lee under contract, and he was. He was really good on Elite Squad, right? <laughs> yeah, no. he <laughs> oh, yeah, he was putting people to sleep. <laughs> oh, um, That's a figure. That's a figure. All right, yeah. Kyle, your book drops tomorrow on Amazon. We'll we'll post the link when it, when it gets also to to Barnes Noble. We wish you success. I'm sure it's going to kill it. I've I've seen nothing but good uh, reaction from you. Uh, we need we we talk about Jeremy Padera, but we need somebody like you in the figure community because uh, you're someone everyone respects your opinion. You're entertaining. You're very not critical when I think you you know I'm I'm probably too critical. You're 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 uh, kind of Switzerland, which is good. You're just you're just kind of the news guy. You're 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 showing us what's what's new, and uh, we need somebody like you. And you're uh, you're great at what you do. So keep keep up, keep on keeping on. Well, I appreciate it. Enjoyed the chat, guys. Have me on anytime you need me. Awesome. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you, Thanks, Kyle. Kyle. Appreciate you, dude.